experience something that every car owner dreads and that is a weird sound coming from the engine. After I heard the sound and had a change of underwear, I decided to be 100% sure where this sound is coming from and what it is. Now, diagnosing a sound, uh, you know, identifying what actually is causing the sound inside your engine just by listening to your engine is uh, notoriously unreliable. So what I decided to do is do a series of detailed checks of my engine to see and to be completely sure what the source and what the cause of the sound is. Now, I, I was concerned that it might be rod knock, also it might be, you know, my uh, valve clearances, you know, being out of, uh, out of adjustment, it could also be piston slap, it could also be something different. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to check and adjust your valve clearance and in the couple of next videos that are going to follow, I'm going to show you how to do each of these important engine checks to be sure how good your engine is and you know what is how good is, is its help actually. So coming up is going to be you know checking for rod knock, dropping the oil pan, checking compression, checking for piston slap, looking inside the engine, you know, I have actually ordered a, a nice endoscopic camera which I'm going to use you know to, to see into the combustion chamber. I'm also going to check my oil pressure, so we're going to do all of these checks in the videos to come. But today we're going to focus on adjusting our valve clearances. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove our cam covers. Now removing the cam covers on a 4AG engine is really easy. All you basically have to do is undo a couple of bolts, remove the spark plug valley cover, and you can actually go on right ahead and remove the cam covers. Now removing the cam covers is usually really easy but sometimes they don't come right off and all you need is a rubber hammer and just give them a few taps and they should come right off. Once you have removed your cam covers you will have access to your camshafts. Here you can see my camshafts, they still look brand new. After a few thousand miles there's no scratches or any damage which basically tells me that my oil pressure is most likely pretty good which, is, which makes me happy. Now the next thing uh, that we need to do when, if we, when we want to measure our valve currents is we need to lift up the car in the air and remove uh, the, rear, uh, the rear wheel. Uh, why are we removing the rear wheel? Well, because we need to get access to the crankshaft pulley. We need access to the crankshaft pulley because we need to, to turn the engine until the number one cylinder is at the top dead center. Now, uh, uh, turning the engine is actually a lot easier if you remove the spark plugs, then you don't have to fight all the compression of the engine. I didn't remove them, I was a bit lazy here, so it takes a bit more effort. Now, how do you verify that your engine is at TDC? Is by looking at the marks on your crankshaft pulley or your camshaft pulleys. As you can see here, the marks on the crankshaft pulley have to align with the pointer on your engine or the marks on your camshaft pulley you need to align against these backing plates. Once these have aligned you will know that your number one cylinder is at TDC and then we're going to consult the factory service manual which tells us to measure these valves as indicated in the picture. We're going to measure them by using a feeler gauge. Now measuring your valve clearances with a feeler gauge is very simple. All you have to do is insert different thickness, thicknesses of feeler gauges between your camshaft lobes uh, and, your, and your valve shims until you find the thickest feeler gauge that fits or actually until you find the one that doesn't fit and the one smallest next, you know, one smallest, the smallest one right behind it, you know, right before it is actually your measurement. Once you have measured the indicated valves, we are going to turn the engine one more full revolution and we are going to measure these valves. Now you measure uh, you can only measure valve clearances once those valves are not are loose, once the camshafts are not pressing on the valves. The procedure is again the same as I already explained. Find the thickest feeler gauge that fits and write down all your measurements. Here are my measurements. In my case, all were within spec. In case some of your you know, valve clearances are not within spec, you will actually need to remove the shim and replace the shim with a correct thickness shim to get the to get the clearance within spec. 
Now in case of the 4AG engine you can do that without removing the camshaft but honestly it's very tricky because you need to at the same time push down on the valve bucket and the shim and remove the shim from underneath the camshaft that that's kind of that's kind of tricky and if you're removing more valve shims if you're replacing more valve shims I definitely recommend removing the camshafts it may be a bit more labor intensive but it's definitely going to you know save you a bit of a bit of a headache once you have removed uh, your uh, your valve shim we are going to use the formula that you can see on this page of the factory service manual of course if your engine is not a 4AG Toyota engine definitely consult your factory service manual to, to check for the appropriate valve clearances that you need now he, uh, once you have found the, 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 you know, the appropriate thickness of the new shim simply install it install it in the place of the old one and your valve clearances should be should be within spec. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for today in terms of checking valve clearance and adjusting valve clearance. In my case, my valve clearances didn't need any adjustment, which is somewhat unfortunate because that would be a very obvious and uh, a very obvious source of my noise but also something that's very you know cheap and easy to fix so this kind of you know points the finger into the direction of something a bit more expensive maybe a bit more complicated but let's not jump to conclusions so I guess as I said that's pretty much it for today uh, don't forget to comment maybe you have some ideas you know where that sound at the beginning of my video might be coming from some things you want me to suggest to check out, to you know, to look and show you how to do it along the way. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and see ya.